we've all been hit by the pandemic, but the airlines in particular, and Delta certainly has been hit. Give us a snapshot right today of how the airline industry looks. How does Delta look? What is your operation like today? Well, good morning, David. Thanks for having us. We're in the process of a, of a recovery. Uh, no question about it. It's slow. It's going to take some time, but there's there's clear signs. It's the momentum we have is meaningful, and it's it's continuing to build. We bottomed out in mid-April with maybe only five percent of our normal customer load uh, uh, traveling today. I think that number is closer to 15 percent. So the optimist in me says we've tripled uh, over the last couple months, which isn't bad, but we got a long ways to go yet. Uh, I expect that number to get up to 20 percent in the, in the coming weeks. We're adding a bunch more flying both in July and again in August, a thousand flights a day each month added uh, in the next couple months. And so by the end of the uh, third quarter here, you know, we hopefully are back to about 30 percent of our loads that we are we are carrying. So we're being very disciplined, uh, taking good care of our people and customers on the journey, but the recovery has started. So how much visibility do you feel you have beyond that third quarter? I mean, if you go up to 30%, does it keep rising at a fairly steady pace or is there possibly a plateau? What do you anticipate going forward? When will you be back to essentially full usage? Well, there's never been more uncertainty given what we're, we're addressing with both the pandemic and the the result in economic impact you know, changes in business travel patterns uh, will also impact this industry. So our crystal ball is, is a little murkier than normal. But you know, I do expect after Labor Day, it's going to be an important uh, milestone and, and pivot point for us, because that's typically when business travel starts to pick up again. Right now, the, the vast majority of our customer base is leisure. Uh, people going out, there's some good bargains. Uh, not just in the air, but on the ground as, as hotels and theme parks and casinos are all opening. But we need businesses to start opening. And right now, they're, they're, most businesses are still largely closed, uh, big corporate businesses. And as they start to open, hopefully after Labor Day, you'll start to see an improved mix of revenue flow. And that, that then will be the next stage of the recovery for us. A key element for all businesses seeking to reopen is the confidence of customers that they will be safe when they go to the business. What are you doing at Delta? Give us a sense of how, what the sort of operational changes you're making to try to reassure p travelers that they will be okay on your aircraft. Well, that's, that's, our, that's our most important task here is protecting the safety and the welfare of both our people as well as our customers. And we're uh, we're doing a tremendous amount. We're, we're accustomed to safety. Safety is in our DNA. That, that's what we sell. We sell safety uh, in the sky. And we now uh, have added uh, another dimension of that is safety from the virus, uh, safety with respect to the hygiene and the sanitization on board our aircraft. Uh, we've, we've uh, for those of you that haven't been out traveling, you'll see a lot of changes in, and I think significant improvements in the experience as you go forward. Uh, masks are required, both in the airports, as you board the plane, as you're on the plane and, bar and masks, I get a lot of questions about masks. Masks are there not just to protect you, it's to protect others as well on board. One of the most important layers of protection we can have is, is using masks throughout society today. Uh, we've put distancing protocols in place. We've capped load factors. Uh, on Delta, uh, we will not board planes more than 60% full, which guarantees the seat next to you, every seat next to you, is open on board the plane. There's no, no middle seats being sold uh, at all. Uh, we've put ele electrostatic fogging in place before every single flight that takes off. And we've also added a, a considerable amount of time and attention focused on the filtration systems on board our planes. We have uh, HEPA filters, which are the highest quality filters one can find. It's what's used by hospitals in their in their operating rooms and clean room environments. Uh, HEPA filters completely circulate and recirculate the air every two to four minutes, with 50% of that air coming from fresh outside the cabin. So the air you're breathing is completely changed out every couple minutes on board the flight throughout the entire journey. And the, the tests and the monitors that we've been using, because we've got sensors now on board our plane to test the quality of the air. It's, it's, the, it's the purest air quality you'll find anywhere. It's, it's, it's 10 times better than a building environment or retail. It's, it's really phenomenal as, as you start to see all these layers of protection add up. And the results our customers are telling us 
They, they have never felt safer traveling. They've never felt better about the experience. Our net promoter scores are up at least 10 right. points over where they were just a couple months ago. And our people are also, <clears throat> excuse me, also safe on board. You know, I've, I've, uh, we've monitored the health and the welfare of our right. people continuously on board. We've got right. about 50,000 people in the customer service area. Right. The rate of infection that we've seen over the last couple months amongst our own people is five times lower than the national average of infection across our entire country. And these are people that live in the airport and live on planes. So all, all the steps are indicating it's safe to travel and, and confidence is starting to return. Right, all of which is very, must be very encouraging to people using Delta Airlines. At the same time, is there a trade-off here? You mentioned load factor, 60% load factor. That historically has been an indicator of profitability for airlines. Uh, it has always been sort of a tough business to be in the airline business. Can you get a good business with reduced load factors as a practical matter? Doesn't that really hit your profitability? Well, the steps that we're taking are certainly temporary. You know, once there is a vaccine, once there are therapeutics to deal with the virus, once there's herd immunity, whatever combination of factors get involved with respect to society, feeling safe to be out in public once again, obviously we'll start to increase the load uh, factor caps and eventually take the caps off. But for now, while there's still public concern, I want to instill confidence in the travel experience and give customers the assurance that when you book on Delta, you will have space on board, you'll have that seat next to you open. And when we get up to close to 60%, because right now we're about 50% full, so in some markets we're already bumping against the cap, that's the key to add more flights, add bigger planes back into the system. And then eventually, as confidence is restored, you'll, you'll see you know, more uh, traveling at scale over the next uh, 12 to 24 months. Can Delta be profitable without a vaccine? Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. You know, next year will be the test of that. Uh, we'll see when the when the vaccine comes in. Uh, you know, right now we've we've been very focused on reducing our cash burn. Uh, when with the pandemic started, we were burning almost a hundred million dollars a day in cash. Uh, for the month of June, just 90 days later, uh, we've gotten that cash burned down to about $30 million a day. So we've done a very good job taking our costs down. Uh, our costs within the current quarter, we've reduced 55% of the cost within the current quarter. And uh, we'll continue to keep costs at a, at a very disciplined level as we add back capacity. And so, as you see, that's why I mentioned we're at 15% revenues today. We hope to get to 30% over the next two to three months keeping the cost at that 50% level, and then we'll eventually, I, I would imagine by the spring next year, be at a point where we're, we're break even. And I also think that's the time when people will have more and more confidence being out in public, more accustomed to the safety protocols, and then you know, word of mouth from consumers as they get out and they travel and they see it's actually not as scary as people think. At Delta Airlines, with other airlines, took some money from the government. As part of that, agreed that they would keep employees on at least through September. Should we expect a substantial outflow of employees from Delta come September? I don't think so. Uh, you know, we're, we're about protecting people here at Delta, protecting our customers, protecting our own people. We're working really hard to eliminate the need to furlough. I, I can't guarantee that. We don't know what the, uh, the, the shape of demand will be in the fall, whether there will be a uh, a return of the virus, a second phase or wave, as, as it's referred to. But I can tell you that the people of Delta are doing a really good job of, of uh, job sharing. We've, we've got voluntary uh, time off. They are currently almost 40,000 of our people, which is close to half our workforce, are out uh, on voluntary leave anywhere from 30 to 120 days, uh, which is really helping the airline save, save a lot of costs. Uh, but when we do get into the fall, right. you know, we'll have to make some decisions around whether we can continue to use all the voluntary steps. We've got right. a big early retirement right. uh, offer going with our people, and I expect <laughs> you know, many thousands of people to right. take us up on that. So, so that will be one of, the, right. one of the other opportunities. If we're able to get through this pandemic without any furloughs, you know, we're a different airline at that point. So, Ed, finally, I really would be remiss if I didn't ask about how the aftermath of the tragic killing of George Floyd has affected Delta. You're down there at Atlanta. Certainly that's been a, a hot spot for some of the demonstrations. How has it changed what Delta is doing? Well, it's, it's hit us all hard uh, as a nation. Uh, our hearts are still heavy. The, the emotions continue to run deep. 
Uh, Mr. Floyd was was killed in Minneapolis, which is one of our our main. I call it our second home. It's our second largest uh, hub uh, in our in our system. Uh, we're doing everything we can to make certain that we stamp out systemic racism throughout our company to the best best of our abilities. Uh, I think this is a time for action. Uh, this is a time for accountability. This is a time to understand and to learn, and we're doing all those things at Delta. I just uh, had a, a virtual town hall with all of our employees yesterday talking about this topic. We're continuing the dialogue, uh, reaching out to leaders in this space, uh, people that have walked these shoes, understanding the perspective in their in their uh, vantage point. One of the one of the people that we've worked with here at, at Delta, and we're gonna I'm gonna be doing a, a town hall with him next week is Brian Stevenson. He's the uh, he was the author and the, the director of Just Mercy, uh, which was his story, uh, working with uh, death row inmates in Alabama, and all all the things we can learn and understand about our own unconscious biases and what we need to do, both personally as well as through policy, uh, stamp out systemic right. racism.